Welcome to Startup Spotlight, the podcast where we dive into innovative startups that are shaping the future. I am your host, Giovanni Vacari, and today we're here to tackle a big challenge, agri and food tech. How are agri and food tech startups remaining competitive in such a crowded and competitive market? We have got to feed the world, and today we're talking to Xander from Much Group, who is here to do just that. Xander, how are you doing? Uh, thanks for having uh, me here, uh, Gio. I'm doing great. How are you? Doing good as well. Feeling very excited about our talk. You know, I'm very passionate about this subject. Yeah. For the people that don't know you yet, you're yeah. about to. 30 seconds. What does Much Group do? What is your goal and your objective? Okay. So what we uh, see is that there's a very big distance between the people making the food uh, in the factories and the people experiencing the food. And those two things are not aligned. So that's where we come in. We have uh, taken the stem of the shiitake mushroom and we use it as the base of a new generation of meat alternatives. It's, it's, it's no additives, no strange ingredients. And just honestly, very delicious, checking the boxes that meat checks. I'm very excited to try it out tomorrow. Definitely. Right, I heard we're going to have some samples going around here. Yeah. But when we're talking about samples and production, the first mm -hmm. thing that comes to mind when people talk about now, right, alternatives, meat alternatives yeah. is additives. Yeah. So how are you guys tackling the flavor part and the texture part, how to make that exciting without adding those dangerous additives okay that's a very good question well honestly um there's two main elements to that like everybody in our team has some history of being a cook like we, we uh, all knew each other because we're freelance uh, uh chefs we used to be freelance chefs well at least i used to be the roles are different um that really gives you a different perspective on food because it's not someone in a laboratory shoving a molecule around no it's it's, it's someone who worked with food, started, started with nothing and make something delicious. We're not looking from the world into the kitchen. We're looking from the kitchen into the world. And the second part to answer your question is that we use the shiitake mushroom. And what sets the shiitake uh, apart from uh, all the different mushrooms and uh, especially as a basis for a good meat alternative is one that it has a lot of uh, fibers, like a, ver a very strong texture uh, from itself, a natural texture. And two, it has a natural umami taste. That's also why yeah. it's, it's, sorry, yeah. Uh, we've, everybody loves shiitake mushrooms. I mean, they are the favorite. Anybody who's had a good ramen, a good noodle, uh, likes to eat at, at, at any Asian guilty. place has, right? Yeah, I, I, I was guilty myself. I went to this Instagram uh, famous place. And that's not what I'm talking uh, about here today. Um, and you've encountered it. Even if you don't know it, this is a, this is a flavor you know. And we're using it. Um, to make something new and something incredible. And now when we talk about production and scalability, mm -hmm. now we have had meat alternative companies in the past, I'm not going to name names because they're not sponsoring, but yeah. we're here to talk about much group. <laughs> but when, we, when they reached uh, the production part um, at scale, when they got investment in, mm -hmm. that's when things became very complicated for them because they nailed a really good recipe in a small yeah. production. And then when it came to the world, yeah, that was a challenge to keep that taste, to keep that quality. How do you guys aim to tackle that? Well, um, despite our uh, process being very um, precise, we um, don't have a lot of uh, factors except for, for the precision and, and, and the, the order that we do things. And I have, I have, we, yeah, it's our own Coca-Cola recipe, so I have to of be course, careful course. with what I say. Um, we know already that this is a process we can scale up. And the only thing that adding uh, ingredients to our base uh, mushroom, as we call it, can do is make it worse. Like, um, if, if, if it works, don't, what's the saying? If it works, don't, don't change, change it. it. That's it. And we already, like the challenge with our product is that we have this base mushroom. If we shred it, it becomes like pulled pork or pulled chicken. If we uh, dice it, we add mayonnaise, it becomes like a tartar. It can be a vegan mayonnaise, of course. We play with much belly. Um, and, and, and if we want to stay competitive, it's not about changing the base. It's about what can we do with it. Yeah, and there, there is a large availability of shiitake mushrooms in the, in the places you're discovering them. And exactly, yeah. yeah. And, and we're using a byproduct. We're using the stem. And the stem in the kitchen, that's why they make the bouillons of it, because they don't know what else to do with it. And they're often discarded. Fantastic. And we're taking that and, 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 and we're making something that everybody so far, over 2,000 people, love. And mushrooms. Why mushrooms? 
Um, well, Rick's a vegan. I'm, I, I don't eat a lot of meat in, in, in general. Um, uh, and Sebastian, to be fair, like he, he tastes everything, but that's also because he's uh, the most gifted chef in our team and he's really on, on the product part. Um, it, it's something that, that where, where our, our past is crossed. Like it was, was for me, it was just a personal interest. For Rick, it's something he's from Vietnam. His, his, yeah, his, his, his Vietnamese name is The Boy. Uh, <laughs> and and Sebastian in in the higher segment played with a lot of natural mushrooms. It 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 just we were working together uh, at at a location where that's where we met. And uh, Rick started playing with something in in the time in the free time we had, and we all gave our input and and we knew we were onto something. We started playing with that, unraveling it, and after weeks and weeks of of of, of playing and being very precise with a very in a very advanced uh, kitchen, we knew there was a lot of potential to do something special there, and we, we built on that. And now you are not a large, you're not backed currently by a large food and beverage company. How no. do you aim to stay then competitive, and how do you aim to keep your edge? That comes with benefits as well, right? Mm -hmm. Like not having that backing as well keeps you more free. Yeah. So what what is your strategy really, strategy to stay competitive? Well, one is that that's also what the trends are showing, right? That's the distance that current companies have from uh, uh, the market. They, they're, they're, they're in a laboratory in the back of, of a factory, so to speak. They're creating something to imitate meat. Well, first off, we're not imitating something. Secondly, as I explained, we're cooked, so our view on food is very different. We're not trying to make something look like something else. We're looking at, okay, what does a user need to experience? And that's really what's missing, right? Because it's food. It needs to be food. It's, it, 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 tech is important. Tech can be a tool that helps you make something great. But it shouldn't be tech on your plate. Nobody's going to go to a restaurant like, oh, look at this technical marvel I got on this sandwich. You know, No, <laughs> that's, that's, not what, that's not what you go out to eat. Yeah, and now when we're talking about as well diets, you you explained that you're also not a vegan yourself. I mm -hmm. think that's very important to highlight that vegan products are not just for vegan people, right? True. They're for everybody, and I think yeah. healthier alternatives are out there yeah. for to be used. Of course. Now mushrooms on diets. You told me before about mm -hmm. how people used to use mushrooms in their diets. I thought it was super an incredible story. So oh. <laughs> please bring it in because I, I want people to hear about okay, it. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Um, well, yeah. Um, Do you and I, I were talking about just before the podcast started? Is, is is also a little bit about the history of mushrooms, right? Like if if we go back and look at our natural diets when we were still uh, hunters and gatherers, we ate a lot of mushrooms. Like ninety nine percent of all naturally occurring mushrooms are non toxic. They're, they're safe to eat. Um, and it's, it's something that we used to do a lot. And somewhere along the way, we kind of lost sight of this. And there's research, promising research, showing that, hey, um, not only are mushrooms really healthy, we're supposed to eat them. There's e even uh, research being done right now, and I, I forgot who and where and when it was, but there's research being done now that uh, shows that we should include this in our diets now. That will give us a lot of health benefits. And if we can be a part of, a, even if it's a small part of a very big solution of, of the well-being of people, that will be absolutely fantastic. I agree. And now bringing back about people's diets. Yeah. What do you think is a big challenge now for people, you know, working hard and trying to get through the day and just yeah. having a healthy meal? How do you think your startup can help that? Well, I think... Um, Food also need, needs to be easy, right? And in our first phase, and that's really what we're looking at now, we're going directly to the restaurants to, to uh, make sure our food is on, on their menus. But if we're looking at, at the big picture, like yeah. if, if we can dream big, if we're allowed yeah. to dream big, we uh, want to make an impact by making people realize, hey, this mushroom, m mushrooms should be staple in everybody's diet. And our product specifically is very easy to prepare. Uh, it's healthy. Um, so if we're looking at these people who are working hard, they're coming home from a long day, they want an easy meal, like in the long term, and it's something, of, of course, open for discussion, that's definitely uh, something uh, we could easily, what, what our product is, is made to facilitate for. And it has fibers, you say? Very, have yeah. fibers? Yes, a lot of fibers, especially we, the stem. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's really great because we do have a very fiber poor diet. In right today's age yeah. let's be honest yeah and uh, we need more fiber that's always very good for gut health it's good for your body yeah now good for digestion as well now next one being a startup in food mm -hmm. and agri-tech yeah. mostly food tech that we're yeah. talking about here what is a big challenge for you now 
Well, what, what we're, we're running into is that um, if we look at the trends in the market, right, is that in the retail market, uh, in, in the Netherlands at the very least, like the interest in, in the existing meat alternatives has stagnated. And here we are coming with something new. So we really need to uh, play with that awareness like, hey, this is not something you know. And I understand that you're tired of what's currently available, um, but this is not, uh, and you, you're tired of this because it lacked taste, it lacked structure, it lacked uh, uh, a good feeling when you eat it. Yeah. Um, and, and that's something that in, in the long run, because we're starting out with restaurants to, of course, um, introduce, it, introduce yeah. it, but that's something in the long run, like, hey, how are we going to tackle that? I think so. And I think when we look at meat alternatives, especially the ones that are very well, supposed to be tasty. I mean, they have so many additives and so many yeah. chemicals that at the end of the day, I mean, I, I am a vegan of, of yeah. long term now. And for me, I always look at it and I'm just like, well, how is this healthier? It's supposed to yeah. be a plant-based diet. But and I understand it is still plant-based, yeah. but I want to go back to the mushroom. I want to go back to the vegetables. It's and a, people want to eat healthy. Yeah, instead of having like a Frankenstein maybe soy sausage on your plate <laughs> yes that's what it is right like the, the yeah. pe people are becoming more and more aware of their eating people want to yes. go back to natural foods and there is a step missing on that staircase and we are that step to help people get back to a more natural and and and, and complete diet nice now when did you start much group uh, i think that was the end of 2022 Okay. Yeah. And it's been going on strong. You just joined Starter Bootcamp. How has the journey been? Um, interesting. Very interesting because it's a learning process. Like at some point you really think, wow, we know a lot now. We know how things work. And then and then you have to make a shift, right? Like like and you, have, you have to take another step or you're, you're seeing that what you're doing is not the right way to move forward. Like one, thi one of the things we did to validate was catering. We did vegan uh, natural uh, natural catering and we were really good at it, but we were realizing, okay, we're getting these requests to cater, this, this amazing food, which included our own meat alternative. Um, but, but on that way, we're like, hey, th this is not uh, what we're supposed to be doing. This is not yeah. why we started this. Like, let's yeah. not get lost here. Like, it's great for the validation. Yeah, and, uh, and we're using it for the validation right yeah. now, but it's, uh, so, so we shifted from that to move forward and that's yeah. scary, but that's also, um, yeah, it's also very exciting. But I think you also followed a very natural, um, well, <laughs> should suppose it to be a natural, <laughs> I think, path, which is to validate first. Yeah. I'm always very proud when I see startups that like, well, do we want to be doing catering? Perhaps not but we're gonna do this so we can validate our product, Yeah. right? That's not what this company is born to do, no. but is what we're gonna do to get it out of the door and to get it validated and to get mm. some cash in as well, which is super important. Yeah. Because, and, and that's a message to all the startups out there, right? It doesn't matter what you're doing in the beginning, you just gotta make it work. Yeah. You just gotta make something that people want and you gotta, you gotta figure it out because the, the mistakes you, you, you think you're gonna make is not the mistakes you actually make. It's true. It's 100% true. And and it, it, is the catering, was it the right way forward for us? That's a question we can ask. But was it a, a big lesson? Yes. Am I happy we did it? Oh, absolutely. Because yeah. it brought us to where we are now with a lot of knowledge about, about starting a business, about growth, about working together, about do's and don'ts. And I loved it. And how do you see the future of food? We have to feed now mm -hmm. more and more people. And I think that Right. I mean, I, I come from what we would call the developing world, right? Mm -hmm. The global south, however you want to call it. And I think it's it's super important that we think about nutrition and then we think about food for everybody. Yeah. Right. The Netherlands here where we are has an amazing, amazing option of, of vegan food, healthy food, but we gotta make it available for everybody. Yeah. How do you see the future of food? Okay, that's, a, that's quite, a, quite a broad question. It's very, yeah, to be yeah. fair. Um what I'm seeing um, and, and, and I honestly believe that, that that's the, also the upcoming trend, that's also what we discussed very briefly, is an increasing awareness of what we're putting in our bodies. But, but we need to start moving on making, uh, increasing the availability of real foods uh, um, for, for honestly for low cost. And that, that's, 
again, I keep bridging to our own product. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I wonder it's so why. so strange. Yeah. Well, what did that people <laughs> have to do? You know? <laughs> so strange. <laughs> it's almost like I'm here to talk about it. Yeah. No, um, but uh, we, for example, mushrooms, especially the byproduct that, 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 that we're using to create, a, allows us to have a very low cost price. And I really think that in the long term, if we grow more mushrooms, eat more mushrooms, which are healthy, we can also make good food, affordable food, more available. In, if we're looking in the long run because we need to have access to affordable food and we need to have access uh, uh, to good food and uh, I, I genuinely believe we can be a player in that let's go then one advice for a startup that wants to start in the food and agri-tech uh, field mm -hmm. what would be one advice hmm. uh, trust your gut it's, it's, it's so important uh, to um, weigh your decisions. It's so important to use data. It's so important to weigh everything. But you're the person with the idea. You had this idea for a reason. So, so trust that gut feeling and, and use data to support it, but go forward with it. Uh, advice for somebody that is now thinking a little bit like, mm, I don't think meat alternatives are the future. What would you tell them? Um, It's a matter of perspective because maybe meat, maybe you don't believe in meat alternatives, but do you believe in delicious food? Because uh, we are a meat alternative, but we're also a mushroom. So we, you, you can say a lot of things, you can share all your thoughts, but let's have a taste and then let's have this discussion again. Nice. I think this interview so far has left me with a, a really nice taste in my mouth. <laughs> uh, but I wanted to thank you for coming here. And I really, you know, I am I am biased towards this start, towards your idea. Me too. I have to say. Yes. Yeah, so, so we are <laughs> preaching to the choir here. But I think that when we talk about nutrition, when we talk about feeding people healthier, better food, I cannot you know, think of a, a, a more delicious mission to tackle. So I want to thank you for being here today. And if people want to find out more about Much Group, how and where can they find you? Uh, we have a website, of course, but honestly, let's just get in touch. You can reach me uh, uh, on plus three one six two eight two four nine six four zero, or send me an email at Xander with an X, X A N D E R at MuchGroup.nl. I'd love to get in touch. Thank you, Xander. Thank you, Gio. Now, this was Startup Spotlight. If you love startups, if you want to change the world, you can join us in our mission. We are Startup Bootcamp. Innovation will save the world. And you can find us on startupbootcamp.org. You can find us on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, everywhere you can find great content. And if you want to join us as a mentor to mentor startups, such as Much Group, is all available on startupbootcamp.org. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Giovanni. This was Startup Spotlight, Startup Bootcamp, innovation will save the world.